While classrooms across Eastern North Carolina stand empty and students and teachers are tucked away at home, we know a great secret. Learning can happen anywhere. In fact, learning can happen everywhere. Welcome to Eastern Carolina Education Connection, a partnership with WNCT and Pitt County Schools. We're here to connect and reconnect with students, teachers, parents, and community during this unique and remarkable time in our state's history by helping you learn from right where you are. Hi friends, Miss Ashley here. Miss Jessica, you're never gonna believe what we get to do today. Y'all, my friend Bobby Jo called me. Not only did she call me, she sent me a care package and said, I want you to look at these things because you're coming out to the zoo. So I open up this package and y'all, this is what's in it. She sent me a kangaroo because she says she has a baby kangaroo named Benjamin in a bag that I get to hold and pet. Oh my gosh, that is so exciting. She sent me these saying that she has a wolf out there that has paws almost this big. She said his name is Axel Rose. I can't wait to meet him. Then in the bottom of the package, are these things and I'm like Bobby Joe what is this they are quills from a porcupine a real live porcupine that I get to see when we go out there so you know I had to call my friend Poppy hey Poppy come here you better get that Jeep ready buddy because we're going to see Bobby Joe at the zoo oh, wow I'm ready to see some animals let's go get her started all right two-toed sloth. These guys, you can find them in Costa Rica. Um, Belt herself, she is a rescue. She's our only wild-caught rescue. Her mom dropped her from a tree when she was a baby, uh, and so that's how we got her, and we've been raising her here ever since. These guys sleep about 18 to 20 hours a day, um, and then they're only up for a few minutes most of the time just to kind of reposition themselves, uh, and they'll sleep in the same position for six to eight hours easily. They have really, really strong arms. Yeah, so this is Slinky. He's a ferret. Um, so these guys are really awesome. They are in the weasel family. A lot of people get kind of confused with them because they play bite a lot, as you can see. He's not biting down hard at all, uh, but people get really freaked out about it. They think they're aggressive and they're really not. Our alpacas and our llama. Uh, so the one llama that we have is right here. Her name is Lana. You're going to notice some differences between her and our alpacas. Uh, number one, when she stands up, you'll notice she's quite a bit bigger than everybody else. Uh, other than that, you'll notice her fur is very stringy, whereas theirs is very fluffy. Um, so the alpacas, originally they were bred as meat animals, uh, and then it became more of a fur industry. Whereas these guys over here were bred more as work animals, so they have a lot stronger backs. She actually has like a big plate along her back. Hi, baby. So she has a big plate along her back. She's very strong. She can pull things. People can ride her. Uh, whereas these guys, they don't have that really strong back. Um, and they have a lot stronger flocking instincts. So you'll normally see alpacas together like this. Whereas llamas, they can kind of do their own thing if they want. Yeah, so he is five years old. He is 90% gray wolf, 10% Alaskan Malamute. Um, when we got him, he was about two years old. Uh, and Bobby Joe to let him kind of know that we were a part of the pack and that like he was welcome into our pack. She actually let him live in the house for about six months. He slept in the bed with her. Uh, he was in there with the wallabies and the birds and the kids running around. Uh, and we never had a single issue with him hurting anybody because he's such a sweet boy. These are our African crested porcupines. Uh, this is actually one of their quills. These guys are super cool, but also a little bit deadly if you're not careful. Uh, so they are known to kill lions in the wild. Uh, they're able to do that because if they just flare up, some of their spikes are actually up to a foot and a half, some two feet long. Um, and that is long enough to pierce vital organs if something pounces on them. So they don't go looking for a fight, but when a fight comes to them, they got no problem taking it on. Uh, they're also really awesome because they are monogamous. So that is Spike, the one you see in front, and then laying down behind in the back, that is Sequilla. Those are a partnership, like we do not separate those guys. Uh, and then the one in the middle who's a little bit smaller, that's actually their baby, Stella. Uh, so they do have one baby at a time. 
Uh, and they are very protective over their baby when she comes. <laughs> um, they're also the third largest rodent in the world, uh, and they're almost entirely blind. They go mainly off of their sense of smell. Katie is a Kawadi Mundi, uh, so she is pretty much like a South American raccoon, um, and she is gonna, you're gonna see her like scratch on me a lot. What she's actually trying to do is groom me for like bugs and stuff like that, uh, because she does the same thing to her. Yep. Uh, she'll also spit food out in her tail and like let it dry, <laughs> uh, which is kind of gross, but then you'll see her go back later and like scratch it out. Yep, she'll save it for a little snack later. Uh, she is another one of our rescues, so um, that's why I sat down instead of going to pick her up. She's really uncomfortable being picked up, but if you just like sit down with her, she'll crawl right in your lap. Um, her favorite foods are like raw eggs and applesauce. Really? You just hand her the whole egg in the shell and she'll crack it open and just like laugh it out like it's a little like slushy. Um, and then her applesauce, she loves applesauce. That's how I won her over because I brought her applesauce every day. And now she's my little friend. She what, does. What would she normally eat? So in the wild, they'll eat fruits, veggies, stuff like that, uh, but they'll eat a lot of bugs. Uh -huh. um, she also does like to eat meat, so she'll eat birds. Uh, she's very agile. Actually, when birds get in here, we just kind of let her do her thing because uh -huh. uh, it is natural for her. And she'll climb up the side of the fencing and like jump off, and she will catch the midair. She's really agile. This is Slash. Uh, he is an African serval. He is full grown, so a lot of people think that he's a baby still, uh, but he's actually coming up on five years old, so he is as big as he's going to get. Um, the best way to explain them is they're kind of like small cheetahs. They do run about 55 miles an hour, so about as fast as a car is on the highway. Um, so they're pretty awesome. They also have one of the longest leg to body ratios of any big cat, um, which makes them amazing jumpers. So if you see him jump up on anything, it's just effortless. He gets up there like it's absolutely nothing. Um, so Slash is kind of a special case. Um, he was a rescue uh, and his owners were not bad owners. They just kind of got in over their head. Um, so he does take a lot of exercise, a lot of enrichment, uh, and he has to have outdoor activity. Uh, but because he was declawed before we got him, is that a joke? Yeah. So because he was declawed before we got him, we did, we did have to adapt his enrichment program a little bit. Uh, so that's why he has the platforms like he does instead of having climbing trees. Platforms are a whole lot easier when you have a cat that doesn't have claws. Um, and then anything we have for him to play with, we kind of have to make sure he doesn't need his claws. Uh, we don't have a scratching post in here because why have a scratching post if he can't scratch? Uh, but he does have a lot of other activities. His bungee cord, we like to hang stuff from that uh, so he can pull on it. Kind of simulates him pulling on meat like he would in the wild. Uh, we also try to hide his food around so he has to hunt for it. Roger Roo. Roger Roo is a red kangaroo. Uh, he's about eight months old right now. So he is getting, coming up on nine months actually. Uh, so he is getting about the time where it is Time for him to get out of the pouch. I'm gonna let him out right now just so he can go to the bathroom. Um, so in the wild, these guys do stay in the pouch uh, 10 to 12 months. Uh, that's when their mom is taking care of them, making sure they stay safe. Uh, you know it's about time for a Gru to get out of the pouch when you see legs and tail sticking out and they're too big for the pouch anymore. Eventually mom will be like, all right, you gotta go. time to go, dude. Um, but these guys are a lot of fun. So um, a lot of people ask us why we bottle raise them and raise them in the pouch. Um, so kangaroos will get this thing called cardiomyopathy. Uh, and yeah, so what happens is pretty much if they get startled, they'll have a heart attack and they'll just kind of kill over. Uh, so to prevent that, you raise them around people, you raise them in the pouch. Uh, so that way, once they're older and we have to do medical work with them, they don't go into cardiomyopathy. We don't have that issue. Um, so we just have to be careful and make sure like other animals don't run them because mm -hmm. if other animals run them, that is another issue that we have to look out for. We keep try to keep medicine on hand to make sure if they do start doing that, we can give them like a little bit of Valium, calm them down, get them back to where they need to be. Um, but we actually haven't had any issues with that with our kangaroos. Uh, we do a pretty good job of making sure they're comfortable with the people. We don't stress them out. Uh, the guy laying back behind Roger, that is Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray is our, um, I call him our teenage boy because uh, he kind of acts like a teenage boy, uh, but we just love him. So this is Skipper. 
Skipper looks a lot different than our other kangaroos because he's an eastern gray kangaroo. Uh, eastern grays, you find them on the most eastern part of Australia uh, where there's a lot more grass and a lot less sand, which is why he's got the very open eyes, kind of open nose, all that stuff. Whereas our red kangaroos, they've got very squinty eyes, very closed nostrils. Those are all to keep sand out of their, you know, mouth, eyes, nose, all that stuff where he doesn't really have to worry about that. So he kind of has has the baby like features and he'll keep those no. uh, but hands are kind of foreign to them Jeff so anytime him. yeah anytime you want to greet him you just yep hey. put your face right out there and he'll get right in how you doing he's very very friendly I love you oh I love you it's my boy so these guys just like I was talking about with the kangaroos um, they've got like the big eyelashes the closed nostrils all that stuff the big floppy lips uh, that's all number one to keep sand out but the lips those are mainly for because he eats desert plants uh, desert plants are very unforgiving they're very thorny yeah. um, and so and he gets bullied by her <laughs> I'm right um, here here I am I he's ridiculous uh, but so that's why he's got all that stuff. He does store fat, not water, in that hump. So a lot of people think he stores water in there. It is fat, so he can break it. So these are our emus, uh, Gladys and Grady. They are pretty awesome little guys. You can find these guys in Australia uh, and a few other places similar to Australia. They are mostly insectivores. They eat a lot of insects, but they will also eat greens and stuff like that as well. Uh, they have really cool feathers where instead of just one feather growing out of a follicle, they will have two feathers growing out of each follicle. So that's a pretty awesome little ordeal. Okay, baby. Um, you'll notice they've got like that pretty blue and the like bright coloring on them. They are very similar to ostriches. They're just quite a bit smaller than ostriches are. Uh, and like I said, they've got that blue coloring. And if you've ever seen the um, Jurassic Park movies, like the newest ones, they're actually their feet were the model for all of the like skin on all the dinosaurs because they're so dinosaur like. This guy here is Joey. He is a Grant zebra. Hi Joey, what's up buddy? So zebras are uh, pretty cool little animals, believe it or not. Uh, these stripes are for camouflage. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, but it's not camouflaged in with their background. It's actually camouflaged with other zebras. So when they stand on a herd together, uh, the way that lions hunt, uh, they have to pick off the weakest link or the one that's straggling. And it's really hard for a lion to tell where one zebra begins and one ends when there's just a whole bunch of stripes in this big sea of zebras. Uh, so that's one of their big defense mechanisms. Uh, and they are pretty fantastic little guys. So Coco is an umbrella cockatoo. The, there we go, thank you for doing that right on cue. That is the umbrella um, from the umbrella cockatoo. So Coco is about seven years old. Uh, she is obviously a female. She's got the brown eyes that, um, you know, that surround her people. The males actually have black eyes, whereas the, the females have brown. They all have the beautiful yellow under their wings and their tail feathers. Uh, yeah. This is Dolce. She is a black and white Argentina tegu, and I probably have dirt all over me right now because I cuddle with her. Uh, and these guys are burrowing lizards, so they like to dig in the dirt a lot. Um, so these guys are a lot like Nile monitors. They can whip people with their tail. They have a very long tail. It's very hard. Uh, so it does hurt when they smack you with the tail. The females normally get around four feet long. The males can get up to five feet long. Um, and they do have very strong jaws. So when she does get defensive and she flares up, all of, all of this stuff flares up. So it looks kind of just like chunky stuff right now, but it's actually a lot of muscle. Uh, and their whole body is actually pretty much muscle. They do store fat in their tail, so if they kind of run out of food, then they can do that. As you can see, she has a nice thick tail, so that is a good sign. We want her to have that. And the really puffy cheeks. Um, she does sniff things with her tongue, so that's why you see her kind of flicking her tongue out like a snake would. Um, she's tasting the air. So this one, this is Ronnie Dunn. Um, <laughs> he's one of the Brooks and Dunn brothers. Um, no, but he, we just pulled them yesterday. The other one is in there. He's one of the more lighter colors. Um, the Patagonia Mars are the fourth largest rodents in the entire world. Um, so they are part of the rodent family. Um, the cavey family, more specifically, but they're actually not considered cavies. Um, cavies are more of like the guinea pig side. Um, but if you do a close up on their face, you can really see that rodent look in their face. Um, they have really big teeth, do some serious squeaking. 
Um, right now we're doing bottle feeding um, and it's day two of bottle feeding. So we're getting there, not quite, but we're getting there. Um, this one actually is getting used to the bottle quicker than his buddy over there. So, um, oh, this is uh, Benjamin. He's oh. a Bennett Wallaby. He's about almost four months old. Okay. The Bennett Wallabies are much smaller than the kangaroos. They're like the cousin to the kangaroo. He'll only be about two foot tall, where those red kangaroos will be over six foot tall. Wow. Looks like Benjamin loves that pouch. He loves the pouch. The whole first year they're in the pouch. A fool? Was that good? That was good. Now, before I forget, um, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned about the um, the summer zoo camp. Yes. So tell so so tell us all about the zoo. Camp. Go to itsazoolife.com. Mm -hmm. We have a week in June, a week in July, and I have an overnight week in August. Ooh. It's awesome. Overnight. Yes. That is really. We have to cool. go check us out. So what are some things that that kids would do at camp? We ride horses. We do an alpaca workshop. We learn about all the animals. We do crafts and music. Um, lots of hands-on with exotics. It's a lot of fun. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for letting us come thank out and you. film. Thank you. Nice to have you. Sharing your animals with us. They are adorable. Thank you. They are. They're so much fun. What an amazing adventure. I hope you had as much fun as we did. I got home and I was thinking about Spike the Porcupine and I remembered this book that I have called Little Prickles. This book was actually written by some seventh graders. So I was thinking anybody can be an author. You don't have to be a certain age. You can be an author whenever you want to be one. So let's just take a look at Little Prickles because he used his quills. And I don't know if you remember seeing the quills that Spike had, but they were amazing. Let's see if they can help him uh, maybe find out how to be a good friend and how to see what's special in other people. I loved being able to see this because it really made me think about Spike at that zoo and those quills that he had that were exactly like the ones that Little Prickles was using in the story. I'm so glad we got to spend this time together on Eastern Carolina Education Connection and I'm really looking forward to our next episode where we can learn and explore together from right where you are. 
You can also connect with us on Facebook using the information below. We look forward to seeing you for our next episode.